In this video, I'm going to go through a project from start to finish. This is the new Toolbox 2020. This is running on AutoCAD's 2020 platform. Um, one thing I noticed when I first started playing with this is it's much, much faster than 2019. 15.6 uh, is the other word, other term for it. It's got a different splash screen when it comes up and a little bit different interface. You can see kind of up here, it mimics the AutoCAD 2020 uh, look because it is AutoCAD 2020. And that down here we have um, the standard AutoCAD buttons, but everything's just a little bit bluer, I guess, gray blue. Anyway, so I'm going to go through a project from start to finish to give you an idea how the software works, to give you, a, um, give you a guide if you're playing with a trial. You can kind of walk through the steps that I'm doing. Uh, this is right out of the box. I haven't done anything special with it. I installed the software. I installed the out-of-the-box uh, library. I have not done any customization. The only customization that I have done is I changed the cursor to red and I changed the command line to red because that's the way I like to do things. Um, other than that, everything else is just the same old uh, or it's just exactly the same as what you would get if you were doing a trial or if you have just started using the software. So hopefully this will be helpful to anyone um, who's using the software. Up here, there's some buttons that are missing because of my video. I can hide the video if I needed to, um, but uh, but we'll get there when I get to that point. So all right, I'm just going to start right into it and um, we'll go from there. So in order to start a project, uh, this is going to be similar really with any microbellum that you're using. Uh, this is similar steps. Uh, this is just in the new shell of 2020. There are, uh, I will put a little bit of a disclaimer in here. Um, you know, because this is new, there might be a few things that you see that aren't what's supposed to happen. Uh, this is actually the first time I'm running through this demo, so being perfectly honest with you guys. I did a little bit today, uh, but this is the first time I've had a chance to sit down and, and go through it. So should be good. I just wanted to give you that disclaimer. So, all right, here we go. In order to, the way it works with Microbellum, is everything is kind of logically lined up the way that you would work through the process. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start a project and then you're going to draw that project and then you're going to modify that project. If you need to, you can do some solid modeling and some and some product viewers. Uh, those are more rarely used when you're when you're going through a project that I'm going to go through. Um, but for, so the first thing I'm going to do is start a project. So I'm going to click the project button. This little window pops up. It's gonna, everything's gonna pop up in this area, uh, kind of like first time use. Uh, I always move it to the middle. We have two different ways that you can see these projects. One you can see like this, which gives you a um, just like a bullet point or folder structure that you can use. So if you're doing quotes and scheduled and in process, you can organize these really however you want. You can rename these. Um, to whatever you need. I Today I added a demo category. So I'm gonna really add a new project in this demo category. The other thing that you could do is you could just see a list of projects. So right down the, the, right down the list, you would see it that way. But for right now, I'm gonna leave it in this category view. So I'm gonna say new project. And I'm gonna give this a name. So let's do 1001. Project walk through. I also have a new keyboard, so my typing is a little funky. I've been using the same keyboard for the last 10 years, and so I got a new one. So my fingers aren't working quite so well. So, all right, so this is project walk through, and then I'll just put to 2020. All right, I'm going to click OK. We'll call this version one. I always like calling it version one. So what happens when we start a new project is when Microvellum gets first, you know, when you purchase Microvellum and you're using it as a company, one of the things that we do is we set you up. Um, so we have technicians that come in and they, you know, come on site with you and they'll set you all up in, in all of your specific construction needs, um, how you typically build things, 
that's made into a template. So what just happened here is when I started the new project, my template with all of my standard construction methods, if, if I was a shop, just got copied into the project level. So now that it's in the project level, I can start to go through and customize it for, the, for this project, and it's not going to affect my template at all. So I'm going to name this project, and I'm going to stick it in capital locks because we're in drafting land here, so I do everything in caps. Uh, okay, so the job description is going to just be whatever we want. So we'll call this kitchen Adam. I'm just going to hit the tab button. I'm going to put a project number in here of 12345. We can add more information. So we can put in a phone number. We can put in facts. We can put in emails. This is all information about this project. Your start date, um, your end date, everything that, that's specific about the project we can add here. If I wanted to add a little bit more user-defined data, we can add that here like addendums, exclusions, uh, maybe more notes. We can add a project level one in this area. This is going to populate our title block. So our title block is set up to, um, to take this information and populate that. Any changes that we'd make, we'd populate it here. Other thing that we have ability to do is keep correspondence with everything. So, or with people that we're working with. So I kind of use the scenario of if you're working with an architect or you're working with a designer and you have five drafters that work for you. Well, and say you get the first email that says, hey, I would like, hey Adam, I would like to change the PLAM color on cabinet A to PLAM color B. Well, I have that in my email. I make the mental note, but I have five drafters that are working on this project. And now they're going, you know, they get the project done, gets to the architect, architect sees, well, geez, it's P -Lam A, and I told you go P -Lam B. Well, that was my fault because I didn't tell everybody or I didn't forward it on to people. So if I, if I was working on this project, I can just right click and copy and paste what the architect has said right into this, into this correspondence and now I have a um, and now I have a record inside this file uh, that's going or inside the project. So everyone who opens this project will be able to see this, and it's in the record. So that that's something that's kind of nice. You can keep it all in one spot. And then we have these two these two in the middle. These two tabs in the middle. We have the project wizard and we have the global variables. I'm going to switch to the project wizard. So. Everything and anything that can be changed on a global level. So we want to change the way the backs are constructed. We want to change the way the screws are. We want to change how deep, you know, the dados are. We want to change all of that information is stored within the global variables. There's only there's over 1500 variables here that you can edit and tweak. That's why we call our library an intelligent library. So, yeah, you can go through the motions of fixing, tweaking, and changing stuff, or you can come into the global variables, make an edit here, and it edits, edits it across the board. What's cool with these globals too is, you know, you have it copied from your template, but um, you can change it on a project by project level. You can even change it within the project level on a room by room level if you really wanted to. But anyways, there's a lot of settings here. Typically, on a project, you wouldn't necessarily be jumping in and changing these settings massively. Um, this is something that you do when a new library comes out. New library comes out, you want to get it edited to your style, your specific stuff. You go through the global variables, get it all set. Then it's saved back to the template, and then you're ready to go from there on out. But on a project by project level, you might have little specific things that need to change. That's what the project wizard is for. The project wizard is a quick window into the global variables. So any changes that you make in the project wizard are going to quickly change the global variables. They're going to find that spot where that information is. They're going to update and edit it. So that's what that's what this project wizard is. This is where you probably spend most of your time adjusting things. Occasionally you jump into the globals on a project level. So long story short, um, uh, this is where we can see stuff like grain direction. So I got grain direction on the drawer fronts, doors, 
sides, backs. We can change it here. It's going to change it throughout. This gives us a quick window into what the materials are that are assigned for this particular project. We're going to look at materials a little bit more in depth, but if you want to just to quickly look and say, oh yeah, yeah, this is, is pulling the right information, or if it's not, you can change that. So we have categories of bases, sinks, talls, uppers, all of these pertain to each one of those. Then we have the same thing here, backs, sides, tops. So this has given us that snippet or that window into what the material is pulling for all of these different categories. Um, now, same thing with hardware. Hardware, we have everything organized by hinges, pulls, locks, drawers, and additional hardware. So we would just select from our list. We have all of the major companies in here. You select which one you want to use. You select the, the um, swing that you want, and then that changes it for everything. Pulls, same concept. We have a bunch of pulls in the system already, standard pulls. Or if you needed to add something custom, we can add it custom. And if you, you can even add a DWG file to it so that it populates within the drawing. So we'll leave those the same, but you can change all the pull types on the base cabinets, the drawers, the doors. Um, you can also change specifics like where they are coming in from the edge of the door, top, bottom. Locks, uh, with the locks, we can actually just blanket across the board for this entire project say it was something that needed to be locked everything we would lock it here we can change the types or if we wanted to lock each cabinet specifically we would just select that um sorry i have four screens here so i if i'm looking all over that's why um all right so then the next thing we have drawers in our drawer systems, we have standard systems, or we have just the standard wood drawer, the standard dovetail, Blum meta box, tandem box, we have grass, we have all of the standards. Um, and then additional, and then we can also choose uh, if we would like to buy these out. So say you don't build your drawers, you buy them out, you want to create a report for that, just select the buyout. It's going to create the report automatically with all the correct sizes. We hand that to the guy who's who's making them. We can change the drawer slides for the standard drawer. So you didn't notice this is just the standard wood drawer or the um, or the dovetail drawers. Additional hardware is going to be for like touch latches, magnetic catches, um, and then I was going to go back. Actually, it's under construction where we would do doors and drawer fronts. So um, under construction. This is our standard heights. So say this project was ADA or something and we needed to change the base cabinet height from 34 and a half to 32 and a half or whatever we needed to change that to. We would change that here and all base cabinets that get drawn now would come in at that height. You can supersede, you su override that on any level. Um, but this is, this is kind of gonna set your standard. So I was working with a company the other day and they were like, well, what if, you know, we did all our calculations and you know with the crown height and with the toe kick and with this and that and everything the calculation of the cabinet was x then we'd put it into here and that's what all the cabinets are going to draw at. um same with your depths your heights are in here uh we can do additional construction so we can say hey i want to have a ladder style toe kick i want to have the toe kick notched at the floor uh, leg levelers instead. Let's actually choose leg levelers. Um, and then we can, by default, what happens is ca countertops are drawn in as like a placeholder. If we were doing PLAM countertops, I would deselect this and draw that in. But for right now, I'm going to do that. We can change the inset doors, uh, full tops if we wanted full tops versus a stretcher. Um, we can do inset drawer fronts. We can do shelf standards versus holes. And even more of this is built into the global variables. This is just kind of, like I said, the, the overview of everything. Then the last thing we can do is we can change doors. So right now everything's just a generic slab. We have MDF door system. We, we actually work with Caldor and Walscraft and you could do user defined. And then under here, we can select if we want to buy those doors out. So we'd be able to buy those doors out. So that's helpful for reporting. All right, so that's the glow, that's the project wizard. 
that's going to update once we save this. Um, that's going to update the global variables. If we had more specific things here, uh, we could come in here. Maybe grain is is more of an issue. We need to a little bit more specific, so we could select. Hey, I want to select perfect grain versus and perfect grain aligns the top and bottom and aligns it through um, like the drawers all align. We could select that. We can go into like I said, over fifteen hundred different details are in this um, area and we can change any one of them and they're going to change across the board like your lip amount it, we most of these have pictures that go inside with it I, I strongly suggest for any new user anybody who's looking into the software just take a, an hour take two hours and just go through these settings and really get a handle on it, exactly how you can control this library um, it's extremely powerful um, same with machining. This is where we'd set your defaults. Uh, hardware. The hardware is a little hardware is a little unique in this. It's not necessarily telling it what kind of hardware it gets. It's more like positioning. Um, so, and then there's an area that's just all formulas that kind of direct everything. So, um, then the next thing is the project materials. In this is where we set up for this particular project. So on the on the left side is what's been assigned. On the right side is where we can pull from. So if I wanted to change some materials, I can look it, I can organize it by name. So everything has got, you know, base in front of it. It's a base cabinet, closet, closet, countertop, die wall, you kind of get the gist. Or we can actually organize it by material. So I can select all the material and say this um, this MDF we want to change to something else. We can grab one at a time and I can say, hey, I'd like to make that three quarter inch melamine instead. Or I can grab all of them at the same time and push it over. You can also do a find and replace, which is handy and nice. Or you can add material pointers as well. So um, there's quite a lot that you can do with materials. On this side, what's cool is let's just make a copy so these are these come in with some specifics if i make a copy of this and see how everything's grayed out on a on a on a level where you are doing edits and stuff you can edit this but right now because i'm in a project uh, it wouldn't let me edit it until i copied it to the project so here's one that i copied this thickness microvellum is smart enough to know that when the thickness of something changes, which changes all the time, I come from a millwork background. I actually used to build cabinets on a bench and I knew AutoCAD. So I kind of worked my way into the office because of that. I had a guy who was going to bat for me because um, he was sick of getting stuff cut wrong on. Uh, he, he was building it and he's like, this is ridiculous. And I said, well, I know AutoCAD. And he goes, well, Adam, you're a good cabinet maker. So get in the office and, and, uh, straighten them out and he had some play so he got me in there anyways long story short um that was a fun process but i got into the office i started using microvellum and you know you're you're pulling in a unit of melamine you put a ta you put a mic on it because you're cutting it on the cnc machine and the melamine is 0.7435 is what my melamine used to be well by the time you put all these cabinets together if you figure that is 0.75 you're going to have some issues so what I would do is I'd mic the material and I'd come in here and I would change the material thickness. The problem is, usually when I mic the material, it was the day that I needed to cut the material. So if you've ever run you know, programs before, you're trying to get them ahead, you know, get them done a week at, in advance. So this is great because what you can do is you can mic the material, you can jump in here, you can change this material thickness. Your projects are already drawn. Your project's already ready to, to cut. So change the material thickness here, process the report, or process the, the job as a work order, get it out to the CNC machine, and you're ready to go. So um, very, very handy to be able to edit it here and not have to mess with, um, not have to mess with changing a whole bunch of stuff later. Another thing that you can do is you can add codes here. Um, you can add codes here to specify a specific um specify a specific 
sorry, again, too many screens, uh, tool to cut this material. So if you had tool 129 is, is always what cuts melamine, you'd set that up ahead of time. And even if your default routing tool is tool 130, it's gonna override with this tool 129. Very handy. Um, so you just put that information here. You can put comments here. You can have a markup price-wise. You can have a waste factor that also comes into the price. You can have a labor value. Labor value is more for like, say you're doing a high end veneer and you have a labor value that's gonna be sanding and finishing. You can add a labor value here and then say you did it sanding twice and then uh, finish. You could add that here and this is gonna calculate in the end. We have a, we have a um, estimating report. It would calculate that cost of the labor involved. So, and then here's our standard sizes. Change the sizes here, it's gonna change the way it goes and you can assign grain to this as well. So uh, the last thing that you can do is you can assign hatching to this. So when we get into the drawing side of things, each material could have a specific hatch that goes with it. So you can pick you know, from the predefined ones or you can do a custom one and just put in the pattern name and it's gonna pull in that AutoCAD hatch. Very helpful. Um, so uh, that's, that's the materials in a nutshell. Um, you can add and change this, but this is typically set up from the get-go. Uh, then we have solid stock. This is your hardwood edges. This is gonna cut list this stuff for you. Um, so that's been, or that's, that's what that's for. Buyout material is more doors, drawer fronts, that kind of stuff. Um, and then your Edge banding is set up here and your edge banding is set up here. And last but not least in this area, you can mess with hardware. Now hardware isn't really assigned. Um, it's more, this is more of a spot where all the hardware goes and, and all the machine tokens get added to that hardware. Um, hardware is more assigned in the drawings themselves. So that's, um, that's the run through of the materials. Now one of the most, one of the, benefits of using microvellum and i've done this on many projects is you you have the ability you know so far i've set up one room in one in the in this project we'll say i'm doing a multi-room house you know say there's 10 rooms in here and each room has a different finish um i'm not going to start 10 different projects with the same kitchen one two three four on them I'm gonna, I'd wanna set up those as different groups of finishes. So what we have, of what it's called, it's called specification groups. So in the specification groups, we can figure out, or we, we can do as many as we want, but right now I have a P-Lamb set, we can have a P-Lamb with a grain, I can do a paint grade, and I can do a veneer. I, like I said, I could do as many as I want. So say I'm doing a hospital, and each, you know, three floor hospital, each floor is a different finish. I, and then the exam rooms are a finish all to their own. I can set it up so that I have floor one, floor two, floor three, and each one of those is set to different materials groups. And then I could have exam rooms set to different material groups. We can even go to the point of setting up different construction methods. So it's extremely powerful. It's like, it's like having projects within a project. Um, it, it gets very, it's, it's extremely powerful, like I said. Um, and it's very helpful. And what's cool is you can just grab a cabinet and say you put it in on the wrong specification group. You just drop down, change the specification group and it's all, everything changes. Construction method changes, materials change. It's extremely, extremely helpful. Um, so that's that. Uh, now you can go into material wizard. This is kind of a new area um, that is still under work. You know, um, so I'm going to leave that alone. Same with the door. Door wizards in there, but um, not really something that you mess with on a project to project level. Now I'm going to save and close. Sorry, that took a while, but that's part of the fun. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new room because so far I'm still in drawing one. So new room is going to it's going to pull in a this list, and I can call this kitchen. One, two, three, four. Okay. And now I'm going to pick a template. So I'm actually going to pick my Imperial template and click open. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring in a drawing, my drawing template. It's going to rename it whatever I name that room. This drawing template's got predefined um, 
pages already in it and it's got every basically this is my standard dwg template this is pulling in from the information that we did and now i can start to draw this kitchen this can look at however you typically do it um this is pulling in my my annotations as well like my annotation uh not my yeah my um dimension styles, my text styles. This is all gonna match yours. This is just our default one. And now I'm ready to start to draw. So I'm gonna go to this plan view area. And now I've done, I've created my room. Now I'm gonna go to the drawing tab. So in the drawing tab, the first thing that pops up are walls. So I'm gonna just right click and I'm gonna say, let's draw this wall at, just pick points. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna pick a point here and we'll go back maybe 40 and I'm going to go over like 150 and I'm going to right click and it's going to draw these walls in. It is putting some dimensions on it automatically. We can turn that on or we can turn that off. Next I'm going to go and I'm going to draw some products. So by default it's going to come in and these products are going to be seen by um, the tall cabinets is what I want by pictures, so it's gonna give you a picture. Sometimes the pictures, you know, they, they might look similar. So what I do is I go to list view, and at the list view, you can see a little picture at the bottom, but then you see the list and what it's called. So I wanna start with a tall cabinet in the corner here. So it's just a one door tall cabinet. And I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna just say, let's place this on the wall, and let's anchor it on the left. I'm going to select the wall I want to place it on. Now you can see an image of it, a, a brief image, and I'm going to take it to the wall. I'm going to hold it off one inch. And then I get a prompts page. This is, you know, we've done the globals, we've set up the globals, we've set up the project. This is specific to this cabinet. Notice there's some red that comes in here. These are pulling from those those default values that we were looking at. If I don't mess with these, they'll stay fluid so that you can change them. If I do change this to a specific number, so 21 point and uh, 3 16 say, this is going to stay there. That's gonna hard code. Uh, if I were to save and close it and open it again, that would be black now. So we can change left swing, right swing, we can say if we wanted to lock this specific door. On this one, I do want to put a one inch left side filler. I don't really care about anything else for right this second. Right here, see that specification group? It's pulling in the right one. We can change interior options. Maybe I want to have five shelves instead of four. Maybe I want to have divisions in shelves. Maybe I want to have a wine rack, glass cabinets. It's all built in. Um, we can say that some of the shelves are fixed. Maybe the third one is fixed. We can change this shelf setback. Shelf setback is set from the globals, but if for this was a unique cabinet, we needed to move it back, we can. There's so many different parts and pieces to this, but for right now, I'm just going to say, let's draw this, and, and then we can make some edits and some tweaks to it as we go through. So what happens is, AutoCAD is kind of the drawing platform in which Microvellum uses to give us an idea of how this is going to look. But it's not just giving us an idea of what it's going to look like on the outside. It's actually showing us what the, um, what the look is going to be on the inside too. So you have construction, you have the holes, you have all of the machining that's taking place. If these holes don't line up with the hardware, then it's actually going to machine that way. So this is going to give you a really good picture of what's going to change, you know, what, what's going to be delivered when it comes to the CNC machine. So now I want to make some edits to this. We get this cabinet in there. Say we get a phone call from the GC and the GC says, hey, I know this was supposed to be a simple one door cabinet, but there's a pipe in there um, and that pipe needs to get account needs to get changed or it's, they send you a picture. And they say that pipe is is in here and it's you know four inches or six inches let's make it a little bit bigger make it one more oops i forgot so now i can jump back in to the prompts
and I can say, hey, on this cabinet, I know it was square to begin with, but I want to show some rear modifications. Notice a new tab has come up called rear modifications. And I want to say in the back corner, it needs to be notched on the left side. We can chamfer it or we can notch it. Let's just notch this one. But I don't know what the specific size is. So what we can do in any one of these boxes, in any prompts page that we see that's like this, we can double click on this. And now I can pick two points and I can have that be the five inches that I just did. Now I want a little bit more play than five inches. I actually want it to be what, maybe five and a half. So we can edit that and we can say that this one's five and a half. But that double click is great to bring in that dimension and now I'll click OK. It's going to make that notch happen through the top and bottom of everything and through the shelves that are there. Actually it looks like my bottom is not notching, which is interesting. So all the shelves are notched, all of the, the top is notched. For some reason the bottom is coming in square and I know it's because... I know it's because this leg leveler is there, um, but what's weird about that? Oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. It's this part right here. This this bottom square is coming in that way. It's not actually that the bottom is notched. So th that's fine. Um, that's just that's just a visual thing, which really gets hidden behind the cabinet. If that was me and this was my project, I wouldn't even care about moving that. Um, cause I know the bottom is getting notched out. So that's, that's one way to go through and make edits. Those, that notch feature is built into every single cabinet that we have. We can do a notch, we can do a chamfer and we can add those dimensions in there. So now I get another phone call and the GC says, uh, or the homeowner says, Hey, I, I need to account for a specific hardware or I have some electrical stuff that's happened into this cabinet. We need to do a little bit more digging into creating this to be custom to whatever the customer needs. So now I'm going to say on this on this right side of the cabinet, the left side as you're you know holding the cabinet, but right side as we were looking at it, um, we need to get a, a hole cut in it. We need to get some routing cut in it for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this. I'm going to draw this down flat in 2D. So I just selected the side and what's cool with this is you can literally pick any single piece, the doors, the drawers, the tops, the bottoms, the lefts, the rights, any piece is, is there. And here's all the list of the pieces that are there. I'm just going to mount this to the side here. And now I want to make some edits to this. So this is exactly the way it's going to come on the CNC machine. This is the way it's going to come out. But I want to put a hole in here and maybe a route to the floor. So I'm going to jump back into this tab. And under 2D machining, I'm going to go to routing. I'm going to pick a router. These routers would reflect whatever your tool file is. And I'm going to say I want to do a route that's three quarters of an inch deep. That is a square cutout. And in this instance, I want to draw this square cutout. So we'll draw it right here. So you can see it's put the cutout in, it's given us a lead in, it's given us a lead out. We can actually copy this. We could stretch and move it too if we wanted to, but say eight. Um, and now I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna just draw the line from the center of this to the bottom. And I'm gonna say, let's do, uh, pick an existing route and we'll do half an inch. Sometimes when you pull the cursor off, we'll do half an inch. I want it centered and I'm going to pick this existing one. Now it's going to route that. So now when I'm done, I can save this. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to hit update and save. It's going to say that it's saved and it's going to draw it in to this view that we have here. This, if you've, if you've used the other version 19 or 15.6, you're going to see an extreme difference. I'm seeing it right now kind of in front of my eyes going, this is nuts. So now I have my route in there. I have the groove routed in because the groove's only half an inch. If I wanted to put it on the other side, I could. If I wanted to make any changes, I can make them right here and save it again, and it'll update this cabinet. So any cabinet, any part, any piece, we can draw in 2D just like I just did, 
We can add any custom machining that we want. It's extremely, extremely powerful. It, back when I was using the software on a, on a production level, um, I didn't have that ability on doors and drawer fronts and all that kind of stuff. You had to do some extra steps when it came to that. I was dreaming for the moment that this would be available. And now that it's here, it's like it, the sky's the limit to what you can do in terms of customization for these guys, um, for these cabinets. Um, all right. So the next thing that, that was kind of the long, that's a long in-depth look at cabinets. Now I'm just going to start drawing in some other cabinets for this kitchen and we're going to get to a point where I can show you the 2D drawings and show you the machining side of things. So, um, all right, so I'm gonna go back to my lists view and I'm gonna go to an appliance cabinet and we have over 350 different products in our library. Uh, this, is, this is something that you can add to. Um, most of the time you can pull from this really pretty well, um, but we can go into face frame we can go into frameless. I'm in the frameless land right now and I'm gonna do an appliance cabinet. I'm gonna do a refrigerator enclosure. And in this case, I'm gonna put this next to this cabinet that's here. So I'm gonna say, hey, instead of putting it on the wall, I wanna place it next to another product. And I'm gonna to say to the right is fine. This is so much faster. Um, and it's just pulling in and it's giving me the prompts. In this case, the only thing I wanna change here is I wanna say that this is a right finished end. And I'm gonna click okay. See, there's that rear modification. Click okay and it's gonna draw in this cabinet. Next to this one, pocket toe kick. This is a, this is a, uh, I don't know what that is. So um, that's one of those Error or little glitches that I was talking about, but nothing that looks like it affected anything. Um, it said something about the toe kick, but the toe kick is going fine. Oh, it might have been an error because I have the leg lower set. Um, all right, so now I'm going to do three base cabinets and three upper cabinets. And in this case, maybe, maybe we'll do it from the front view so we can see it populate. It doesn't really matter what where we do it. So let's go in. I'm gonna say, let's go to drawer banks because I want these base cabinets to be three drawers. And I'm gonna say, let's pick this product. And I want, in this case, I want three of the same. And I want these to be 30 inches wide. Notice on this one that the drawers are automatically calculated to be equal. I don't really want that to be the case. Now, keep in mind, this is the prompts for all three of these cabinets. So any changes I make to this will change to all three. So I'm just gonna right click in this area. I'm gonna go to calculators and I'm gonna go to drawer front calculators. I just had a moment where I was making sure I was recording. And I'm gonna say I want the top drawer to be six and I want the bottom two to be equal. Calculate it, gives me the equal. This is already calculating the eighth inch gaps or three sixteenths inch gaps, whatever, or three thirty seconds inch gaps, whatever you typically do, that's all calculated. I don't know if you've ever done that in AutoCAD with a plants with a vertical section of a cabinet. That's a little crazy sometimes when you're having to figure out all the spacing to get it stretched. It could take you three, four, or five minutes. We just did it in one shot. So I'm going to click OK. It's updated those. We can pick more variables if we wanted to here, if we wanted to lock drawers, if we wanted to finish options. But for right now, if we wanted to override the drawers that were here, we could do that. Um, and I wanna click okay, and it's gonna draw these three cabinets in place. Now I'm gonna take a sip. Notice the countertop is getting drawn in automatically. Um, again, you can turn that off. You don't have to see, you don't have to have that be in there. Um, but for right now, I'm going to do that. Now I'm, I'm going to jump back into the prompts on this guy. And I'm going to say that that's a right finished end. Notice the countertop is going to adjust automatically. That's a value that's pulling from the library. Uh, it's just going to over, overhang a little bit. That end turns a different color so you can see that it's finished. 
Now I'm gonna do, next thing is just three upper cabinets and then we're gonna to get to a point where we can get this thing drawn up in 2D. So I'm gonna say upper cabinets, place text to another product. Let's do three, let's do okay. These are 30 inches wide. And I'm not going to pick right finished end because this is for all three cabinets. I'm going to pull back in and I'm going to change this to a right finished end after these three. What I like about that is, um, you know, you kind of pull in, you know, say you had a valence height, say you had other specific things about all three of those uppers. When you put in three like that at the same time, you make the change to one of those prompts and it changes all of them. Um, the other the other thing that you can do that I've done before um, that's very handy is you do that say the middle cabinet was an open cabinet and we just wanted to get the pull in the properties from the from the open cabinet or from the other cabinets and I wanted to replace this we can go in later we can say hey I want to modify this I want to modify a product and I want to replace this middle product and now it just gives me that same list and I can go right into frameless I can go into uppers and I can say, hey, this is an open upper, but and I'm going to say replace. But any any specific any um, prompts that matched each other would automatically come in. So like this is automatically coming in at 30 inches wide. If I had put a valence height in at three inches, it's going to look at that variable and say, oh, it's three inches, not zero. So that's one thing that I like, and it's going to keep the same number. It's just going to replace it with that open cabinet. So you can do that, uh, and that actually works really well when you're when you're lining stuff up to keep it all consistent. So just some tricks I've learned. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it from the top and show you kind of what's been happening in the background as I've been drawing those. Those have been coming in with dimensions. This is just this is drawing. It's kind of superimposed over a floor plan. We're going to redraw the floor plan a little bit later. So typically when I'm doing drawings, I don't like to see the dimensions on this view. I actually see them on the 2D view, but I wanted to leave them in there. Um, it comes in that way by default. I didn't want to mess, make changes to that. So now, ooh, and it looks like they changed that. That wasn't, that wasn't there before those. Oh no, those were there before. Um, anyways, so and even on the finished ends, we've got dimensions there, which is kind of nice. So now I want to do uh, one more thing. We have the ability also to group cabinets together. So say you're doing a high rise, say you're doing something where you need to create a group. In this instance, I've created a group that is a, or it comes in by default, actually, I haven't created it, but it comes in uh, a group that creates an island. So if I go under product groups, so if, if this if this lineup was something that I was doing in room to room, say it was a hospital, it was room to room, and I just needed to change the finish or I needed to change something, I could just group this together and then the next drawing I just hit draw group like I'm gonna do right now. And it's gonna draw all the cabinets together. So I'm gonna pick a point for this group to draw in. So I'm gonna pull down from the corner here. If I can get AutoCAD to cooperate. So I'm gonna pull down here. Come on. New AutoCAD is always fun. Oh, we'll stop it. I want to I want to be zoomed out so you guys can see it, but uh, maybe it's just my setting. So there we go. So I'm gonna pull out here. Uh, you can do it. Yeah, I gotta be zoomed in. So sorry, you guys aren't gonna get to see the drawing. So I'm gonna pull out. Come on. I have probably some snap setting that needs to get changed it's ultra sensitive or something come on all right we're gonna go with that one and I'm gonna say um, if I needed to I would just stop this command and draw a line at what it needs to be and just pick that but I'm just gonna show you quick so now I'm gonna draw this down it's it's about 70 I think it's like 79 we'll just go 80 gives us a good space in between. And then this group is gonna be rotated 180 degrees cause it's flipping it around. And now unfortunately it's gonna draw in the background. I'm gonna try and zoom out while it draws. So it's drawing in the sink, it's drawing in the surround, it's drawing in all the cabinets that are next to it. 
and it's pulling them all in as new products. It's just all the settings and features that were done in the um, prompts, it's just remembered and it's just pulling those in as a remembered thing. So we can now look and see, and if I needed to like align this, you know, I didn't get my alignment before, so I can draw this line in here and go, oh shoot, I'm off by what? Let's see, let's measure it. I'm off by from here to here, an inch and a sixteenth. No big deal. So I can go in to modify. Now this, uh, this is AutoCAD stuff, but in this you want to modify and you want to move products. And I'm just going to grab everything that's here in the window. And then I'm going to move it over an inch and a sixteenth. Done. So that's why I wasn't too care. That's why I didn't care too much about alignment um, because it's that easy. And then I can check alignment here. 43 if I needed to I could move it up to 42 anyways so this is what we've got going on for my kitchen so now I want to do a couple of things first I want to take a look at it in a rendered view and see what that's going to look like so I'm going to get it into a position where I can see it maybe put it into para perspective view from parallel I'll zoom in I'll orbit around we'll get it into a spot we can save this as a let's orbit we could save this as a view if we really needed to so uh, once i'm here and again this is default so so if you're messing with the software then you want to do the same thing just do what i'm doing right now and you're going to see the same results so i'm going to say let's do a render oops we can type in render or we can actually find it on the side here oops Oh, the lights are displayed. That's fine. This is a message that you get initially, and I just turn it off. So, where are we here? There we go. This takes a few seconds to do because it's doing a rendered view of everything. So, now it's going through and cleaning stuff up. If we want to reposition, we can reposition. I didn't put a floor in. I didn't put a ceiling in. You know, we could get into sp specifics there. But this is our rendered view. We can save this if we wanted to. So we could say, hey, let's save this to our desktop as a PNG, as a JPEG, whatever you want. Desktop, save it. Sure. And then we can close this and we can go right back to our drawings go back to parallel let's go back to top view um, so and I'm gonna change this to 2d wireframe I think it got a little funky when I changed it to the uh, whatever to non parallel the perspective there we go alright so now I want to do some drawings but there's two different ways that you can do drawings one is um, one is more for like a quick presentation quick show to the homeowner, quick show to the designer, say, hey, this is what you're going to get. Uh, maybe something that you can show your guys on the floor. And then there's one that you're going to use for the shop drawings that you're going to get architect red lines on, that you're going to go through the motions on. So I'm going to show you the quick view first, and then I'm going to show you the red line architect view. So the quick view is going to be under home. And over here at the, the side here, you can't really see it. Let's see if I turn my oops so right here on the side here is a base it's called base and I'm gonna say base for model space and oh, one thing I forgot to do but I can it's okay I'm gonna select uh, certain project products I'm just gonna select the back wall I don't want to do the island I'm just gonna do the back wall and then I'm gonna right click and it's going to ask me, hey, where do you want the, uh, where do you want this to go? What, what page view? And I'm just going to type in 3D drawing. Just the name of that tab. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to bring me here. Now, one of the things that I didn't do and I should have is I'm going to just, well, it's OK. I can leave that there. So I'm going to establish a, an elevation plan view and an isometric view and then I'm going to let that do its thing 
and this has a viewport in here. So what I typically do, and I forgot to do it, is I come into this, I delete the viewport, and I would have a dedicated sheet to this. Um, if this was my template, I'd just have a dedicated sheet to it. It'd be a lot easier. But if you select it and you go back and you pick that, it's gonna automatically pick that sheet so you don't have to type in the name that I just did. So now I have these three views and I'm gonna select one and I'm gonna edit this and I'm gonna say I would like to only see, I would like to have this be hidden. Yeah, be vis visible, sorry. Oh, no, 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 let's do that again. Sorry, my voice is going in and out. I've been talking literally all day. So let's do hidden view and visible lines. So now we're gonna just see the visible lines. I'm not gonna see all the dotted lines. So we can see here's my isometric, here's my plan, my elevation. Now these two, they need to get bigger. This one needs to get needs to stay the same. So these are all together. Um, so if I change one, they change them all. So if I change this to half an inch, look, they're all gonna change to half an inch. Well, I don't want this one to be half an inch. I want it to stay quarter so I can override it. Now that I'm half an inch on this, let's do some manipulation here. So I'm gonna pull this down, I'm gonna pull this down, uh, pull this up. And I'm gonna grab this and I want to throw a section in here. So let's do a section. Let's do a section at the top. And now when you pull up or you pull down, it looks at it from the bottom or the top. So I'm gonna to pull up. Notice it's kept alignment and it's also kept the same scale. So now that's a section through the upper cabinets. Let's put in a basic hatch. This is not where the hatch patterns get pulled in from the material files, but this is cool. I can move this and look, the plan section just updated. Anywhere I put that, because this is all 3D geometry, it updates automatically. So now I'm gonna say, let's do another vertical section through here. Now in this instance, you gotta do the vertical section and you gotta pull it to the left. And then, and then once it's here, then you move it into place and you're good to go. The labeling system that's happening right now is just pulling in that label. This is automatic, you can change that, you can edit that, you can make that whatever you would like it to be. We can also move it around, it's just text. Obviously, I would take a little bit of time, set that up the way I really wanna see it, and then I wouldn't have to mess with it. So this, I'm just moving into place. Now maybe I wanna do a detail here. Now I could come up and say, let's do a detail right here. And now it's gonna bring in a detailed view here. This might be the wrong size. So I can highlight it. it, takes a second to highlight it sometimes and then make it the right size. If I really want to, I can do an insert. Ooh, that's new for 2020. Let's go up here, I'm gonna insert it this way. I'm gonna insert a raster image from my desktop, pick the image of the kitchen that I did and let's just place it right in this blank space. So now I have a quick view of everything that I want to sell to this customer. If something changes, look, it's pulled in my customization. Um, I can dimension this just like normal AutoCAD. So let's dimension this out. Oops, I can dimension from here to here is actually one. So this, this, if you wanna throw quick dimensions on here, it's great if you wanna just have it be vague, you know, say this is just a proposal, just be vague, throw in maybe a couple of over, overview dimensions. That's it, now this is ready, this is ready to send, you know, print and give to the customer. Extremely cool, extremely cool. This is, a, this is an AutoCAD thing, but because we draw everything in 3D geometry, we're able to utilize this as something that we can really excel in and having all the plan section data there. I mean, this to me in, in drafting, cause I come from a, you know, I actually own a drafting company. Um, we have 10 full-time drafters here and a plan section, I, pl I, I figure at least two hours per plan section because of all the detail that you got to put into it. 
So I just did a plan section in 30, 20 seconds, five seconds, whatever. Um, and I can add as many as I want. So extremely powerful part is this. Now I'm gonna show you what you can do for shop drawings. So that was core, kind of more like a presentation drawing. Now let's go into shop drawings. So I'm gonna use over here as my drawing palette, if you will. And I'm gonna go back to draw and I'm gonna go down to 2D drawing. And I'm gonna say, hey, let's draw a 2D elevation of the wall. Now before, I don't know if I stressed it, walls are important. Walls kind of group everything together. I strongly re recommend drawing a wall. So I'm gonna say, let's draw a 2D elevation of this wall. And it's gonna say, would you like to select all the cabinets or specific ones? I do wanna draw all of them. And I'm gonna just zoom in and I'm gonna pick this point right here. And what Microvellum is gonna do is it's gonna automate this process and it's gonna put dimensions in. It's gonna put cabinet um, you know, numbers in. It's gonna put in PLAM finishes. It's gonna put in finished ends, adjustable shelves. This is all coming in standard. Now, when I, when I hover over this and see how everything is changing like that, that's a setting in AutoCAD that I didn't turn off for this. Um, that's just called the annotation view. It's like an annotation view. I think I probably could type in annotation. It's something anno where I can actually see it Let's see what that does. Nope. One. I'm not sure. There's a setting. I just got to find it. But um, but it's pulling in whatever scale I have it set to. So if I change this to one inch, see how it automatically changed to one inch? Annotative, annotative ability is ex extremely powerful. If you're not using annotative scaling, start using it um, because you're going to save a ton of time. So, all right, so there's my plan, there's my elevation. This is just standard AutoCAD. So if I wanted to add more dimensions to this, I can, this is set up as a group. Um, we, can, we can turn off the group display. And of course, this is a new 2020 AutoCAD. So that take, might take me a second to find where that group display is. Usually it's here and it's over here, but I, maybe I'll just type in group display one let's see what that does nope group display zero nope two is what it was oh uh, there we go it's group edit no that's not it no 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 sorry this is part of the learning curve of can ungroup stuff. Group edit, group display, group. No, that's if you wanted to group something. It's one of these guys. It's always a thing that you go, oh yeah, it'd be nice. Manage. You can see too, maybe it's a tab that's not here. Probably just missing it. Quick select. Great, it's gonna drive me nuts. Anyways, I can dimension just my own dimensions. I, I'm being stubborn right now. So let's just do a dimension linear and um, pick where I wanna go from. So from here to here. So this is standard AutoCAD. There's nothing special about it. And now this is what I was trying to do. I was gonna highlight over that and hover and then just do a continuous dimension. Um, so we, we can just do any annotation that we typically do is right here. Um, we, don't have to, we don't have to do it in a different spot. We don't have to do it on paper space. We can annotate it here like it's standard geometry because that's what it really is. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna do the next thing I wanna do with just a plan view. So I'm gonna do a, a, a wall plan view and I'm gonna select that same wall and in this instance, I'm gonna put it right on this point. And it's gonna draw in this wall. It's gonna draw in basically all the dimensions that you see 
under here because it's it's kind of overlaid over top of the 3d or under the 3d drawings but now it's going to draw it as a wall here or as a as a plan view here i used to have time to take a drink at some of these things and now it's whipping right through it so i'm going to do one more plan view of this wall this one's a little tricky because it actually goes to the outside point i'm not sure why so i'm just going to draw it here See, it does that, it's kind of funky. And then I'm just gonna move it into place using AutoCAD. So there's our one. And now here's the cool part. So I wanna do a section through from here to here. So say 12 inches, that was 11 and five nine. So what I'm gonna do for the section, I'm gonna stay right here and I'm gonna say, let's do a 2D section on this wall that is 12 inches in. And then we can do cross section or plan section. I'm gonna do cross section. I'm just gonna pick a point that it's gonna go on. And my snap settings are funk. I always select all. So now I can pick a point. And now it's gonna draw in a 2D section of that cabinet equipped with the, equipped with the um, detail, you know, that detail that I added to it. This hatch pattern that's coming in, that's coming in, um, from that material file if I want a specific hatch pattern to be there we would see that let's do one more section through here so if you've used microvellum before so that's about 65 if you use microvellum before what you what you used to have to do for sections is you used to have to select a section of the base draw it select a section of the counter draw it select a section of the upper cabinet draw it now what we can do is just select the wall specify what we wanted that to be and i don't remember what this was I think it was like 60 74 is fine um that's going to go right smack dab in the middle of the wall which is going to get me with cabinet that i want so but now we can just select that one spot and it's going to draw everything in here some of the annotation that's coming up here that's a little wonk funky that gets corrected when we go through things this is one of those things that i was talking about something got screwy oh this was gonna this was gonna um finish i did this earlier today so for some reason it pulled that in funky let me just try that one more time maybe it was the exact location that i had because like i said i did that earlier today so let's dimension this one more time that was 65 and let me do that one more time because something screwy so we'll do 65 and we'll go right there. Let's see if that helps. If that doesn't help, it looks like it was just giving me an issue. Yeah, I think I might've been, maybe there was, I was smack dab in the center or something. Maybe there was a piece of hardware or something in the way, but it's working now. So there's our 2D draw, or there's our, there's our shop drawings, they're in 2D. And then I would just do what I normally do, and I would put this on a page to do a page layout. And I would demand, you know, I'd annotate anything else that I need to annotate, and I'm ready to go. There's my shop drawings. Now, the cool thing with this is, say I get my shop drawings back. These are red lined, and the architect says, "Hey, Adam, uh, this cabinet here needs to be two or three adjustable shelves instead of two." So I can say, oh, okay, let me go into the prompts of this cabinet. I can pick the elevation. I can pick the section. I can pick the 3D. I can say this shelf needs to be a two, a three shelf. Click OK. It updates it in the vertical section. It updates it in the elevation. It updates it in the, in the, sec, in the 3D. Any one of these, they're all interlinked. So any changes to them, it changes everything. This is huge. I have people whose full-time job it is to make sure that the changes that were made to one thing are made through everything else. You know, they kind of like the reviewer of the drawings. Um, this is extremely helpful for, for that, uh, where you don't have to mess with that anymore. I mean, that, that job is still a valuable job to have a reviewer, but now they can focus on other things instead of focusing on the little stuff that you would typically miss before if somebody updated the height in the elevation but not in the vertical section it's all consistent now so say we're done we're ready to go we're ready to take this to 
the CNC machine and we want to process this as a project. All the field dimensions are done, everything's done. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, hey, let's create a work order from this drawing. Now it's asking me which products do you want. I'm just going to create a work order of the back wall. I'm not going to worry about the, um, oh, I see something that's interesting. That unhandled exception, exception might have been this cabinet. Maybe, let me orbit this. This is just, again, this doesn't typically happen. This is just because we're running the latest version. You're bound to catch something that's going to be a tweak, but that's okay. That's, that's why the salespeople get to mess with that first. All right, so I'm just going to say modify. I'm going to actually, there's a way that we can look and see what where this is. So see, I have, there's four, there's five. That's cabinet 1.03. So let me go into my product viewer and see if 1.03 is here. It is. So that for some reason, this got deleted and it didn't get redrawn. That's fine. We can just right click in here for my database and say draw a new drawing. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to just redraw this product from the database. What's cool about microvellum is anytime a product gets dropped into a, into a room, it's in the database. So all of these products, I could delete every single thing in here, gone from the DWG file. DWG file crashes, AutoCAD crashes, we have issues, we have problems, whatever. Everything that I put into this drawing is in the database. So I just right click everything that's here and I right click and I say redraw from database extremely powerful um, extremely powerful redraw that from database redraw the walls from database I've that's helped me out of a pinch many times so anyways I'm gonna go back to the top view kind of a side snippet there but I guess it's worth going into and I'm gonna say hey I want to draw I want to do a window of this back wall and I want to process this as a work order so we can we can pick a whole bunch of things here I haven't set up my naming convention um, it's set to you can do standard or you can do you could do a standard one or you can do custom I'm going to do a standard one and we'll, I'm going to standardize this so that from now on it's just going to pull in this name so I want it to be the project name Ooh, add valuable add variable and I want it to be the project number and I want it to be the room oh, that's the job number I want it to be the room name and I want it to be what else? We can pick a whole bunch of things, but that's fine. We'll, we'll call it this. I'm gonna click okay, and it's gonna pull in all that information. Everything looks good. I'm gonna say, okay, let's go and let's process this work order. We can create things, but DXF, print work order, grooves, everything looks good. All right, so I'm gonna process this, and, and it, see it's only selected those cabinets. If I wanted to select the island, I could. If I wanted to select other projects I could do that say some some base cabinet needs to be recut same finish just select it it'll nest it with everything else so I'm going to process this this is going to process all the parts and pieces and create that work order from it now this I'm probably going to have a little bit of time to, to drink my coffee so it takes a second to go through this um, I need my coffee because it's 11 o'clock at night actually I could drink a full pot of coffee put my head on a pillow and sleep soundly throughout the night. That's just the way coffee is with me. Um, so this takes a second, but it's pulling in all the parts, all the pieces, all that information that we just set up, all that, all those settings are just being processed into a big list. And it's saying, hey, do you wanna see the work order? And I do. So now I can make my picture disappear and you can see the work order. So everything's blank. Um, this is something that happens sometimes. I'm just gonna load the parts. Sometimes it comes in automatically, like like my older 2019, and sometimes you gotta load the parts. It's really no big deal. Um, so here's all the parts and pieces. We can organize this same as we were doing before by size, by material, by quantity, by room, 
by part number. The other thing that we can do to filter this further is we can actually pull these up to the top and we could pull a lot of them up to the top. So this is my main filter, my secondary filter. We could put it right back in this main filter. Maybe I want to see only the parts that are three quarter inch particle board apply. There it is. So if I wanted to nest that, done. Maybe I don't, maybe I want to see everything. So I select it all, I hit apply, and then I move this filter back and I'm done. So it's cool, you can filter as much as you want. Now down here, these are nests, or these are default tool files. Um, or these are sample tool files. So if you, again, installed this as a template, or sorry, installed this as a trial, and you wanna play around with this, we have a default nest, default point to point, default saw, if you're doing saw optimization, saw optimization, default solid wood doors for, for that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna mess with the nest inside here. We can make changes and edits. So if we wanted to change the way this is for optimization, we can do that. So we can change it for, hey, I want the longest parts. I want sequence to be smallest to largest, to be you know, largest in the middle, smallest outside. We can do center line nesting where it just plunges down and routes the entire thing in one shot. We can do stay down nesting, which will which will um, optimize the parts and pieces to stay down. You can have a lead in, you have a lead out. We have distance between parts for that. We can do true shape nesting, where right now it's gonna block nest everything. True shape nesting eliminates that border if you had curve curvature pieces. Um, so there's a lot of different settings here. What's cool is, you can save all these settings as one processing station, and then you could actually save, or copy that, save it again as different ones. So if you said, you know, I have one specific setup that I use for um, plywood, and I have one specific setup that I use for melamine, and I have one specific setup used for this, we can have 10 different setups here if we really wanted to. So um, that's just a little window into uh, the tool. So now I'm going to select this. I'm going to select all the parts. I'm going to say let's apply the processing station to the selected parts. So here they come. There's all the X's. If I were to pick the other ones you would have seen X's there. Um, and now I'm going to process this. When I process this, this takes a second. It's What it's doing is it's nesting everything. Um, this is just giving me an, uh, an option there in this particular part. There was machining on one side, not on the other. Um, and it's asking me if I if it can flip it. So it's going through and flipping everything. It's been a long day. <laughs> and once it's processed, it's going to say processing is complete, ready to go. So I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to open up drawings and I want to see how that everything nested. So um, here is my nest file. So here's my optimization. If I don't like the way this is optimized, I just jump in and, and tweak some stuff. Here's my other cabinets. Here's my customization that I did. What's cool with this, oh, look, this is cool, this is cool. So this is, is giving me all those pieces, but this must have been a glitch. No big deal. Actually, this is good. I want to use this from now on. So this is no big deal because now I grab this from the back corner and I move it up. Boom. Done. I could have taken a little bit of time in the in the software and edited it. I didn't think it was going to matter. I guess it did matter. No big deal. I could just move that geometry right in the program. Um, if I don't like the way these are, I can move these around. That's the beauty of the software. We can mess with this. We can mess with any one of this data. Um, we can ch change and edit this as we see fit. Um, we can move these parts and pieces around. And there is a, um, there is, and then once we've done, once we're done doing that, there's nesting tools here. So I'm going to mount that to the right. Maybe I'll actually not have it hide just so I can show you if you have a bigger screen. You know, more real estate than me. 
So I'm going to close this guy. So here, these are things that we can do to edit these nests now that we're in here. We can move parts around. I can copy a part. I can rotate a part. I can change set mills. Uh, I could delete a part if I wanted to. We can re-nest. We could add sheets if we wanted to. Let's add, you know, add a, a, a sheet of, say, I needed another sheet of three-quarter inch melamine. And I could just say, hey, let's draw that sheet. And it's asking me where, where I want to put that sheet. Let's put it right, I don't know, let's put it right here. Done. That sheet's here. I can do any customized, you know, piece, parts or pieces that I want. And I can assign a router to it. This is cool. This, this stuff excites me. I could say, okay, that's three quarters of an inch. And now there's a custom piece that's ready to cut. I can add, I can add um, drilling to this. I can add, you know, anything that you typically do in like alpha cam. You can just do that right here. So um, anyways, I was going to show you one more thing with this. We can edit the, um, go back to my nest tools. We can um, edit the set mill, which is, so this is kind of where stuff leads in and leads out. And one of my, co one of my guys, um, the shop that I used to work for uh, is right down the road. We we're still have a very, I still have a very good relationship with them. My company does for the drafting. We do all their drafting. Um, and the gentleman that took my spot that I trained um, and since he's way excelled in, in microvellum, he showed me this. Um, because he changes the set mill because, you know, in a nest environment, I actually don't want this to cut like that. I want it to cut close to the piece that's here. Um, or if that was like closer to the end. So he changes the set mill. And this there was a little bit of a, a glitch in the system. When you change it, I want to see if it's still in mine. So if I want to change the set mill from here to here, I just pick the point. No, nope, it looks like they fixed it. So change the set mill to there. I can just start picking and keep going and now it's going to route in and out here and give me and when i'm done i just do that so we can change where pieces start and stop we can also update the instructions once i've done that i just grab this update the instruction it's going to override the g-code that was created um, and give us that give us that warning we can change priority of way these are cut um, I when I was using microvellum before we were using it with woodwop and um, and I would change the priority inside woodwop so that was the one thing I couldn't do in microvellum um, this was this was a while ago I couldn't change a priority so what I'd have to do is I'd nest this I'd send out the G code and then when I was at the machine or I had a guy at the machine I would tell him hey this is how I want the priority go or I would change it in the office and send it out to the machine or the machine guy if I wasn't confident in their ability so um, and then I would physically bring the routers up to the top and, and change the priority now you can do it all right from here I can say hey I want this to cut first oops let's do I would like this to cut first Not a valid entry. Oh, that's interesting. Must be. Oh, maybe this is it. This is assign priorities to routes. Assign priorities to borders. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to pick this one, then I pick this one, then I pick this one, and you go through the entire, and then I do this one, and this one, and this one, and this saves, I mean, this would have saved me a lot of time. I was going to say years of time. It probably would have. All the, all the routers that I changed. Done. Now I just update that. The other thing that's happening too that I don't like is see how it's putting a label. Like it's putting a, the um, text on the piece itself. That's that's There's a setting that you can change in here. Actually, it's a setting that you can change in here I'm pretty sure it's in here where oh now it's gonna annoy me um, it's a setting here yeah see text on parts no I actually want test text as a list and I'm gonna click OK if I were to re-nest this 
it would nest everything where that text is. There's a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then throw the list at the bottom. Much better, much better way to do it. So here we can do quite a lot. Um, we also have the ability to add tabs if we needed to, or uh, to make make a nest a centerline nest. We can edit things as well. So um, we can see what's going on. I'm not sure. I don't really mess with the edits too much. So this tells us information and what tool is cutting things. We can also kind of shortcut for that is we can highlight this and up here in our layers. Uh, where's my layers? So here's my layer. See my border? And it tells me this, this actually tells me what is cutting. So it's a border. It's cutting five eighths of an inch deep, and it is tool 101. So right there. So kind of a cheat on that. Anyways, so this is the the power in this is we can edit and change things now even here. So it's extremely. It's a great. It's it's in terms of functionality, in terms of ease of use. Um, like I said, I've used it for years and I even used the version before this, before it was this easy and this just makes life so much, so much happier. Um, what I would do too is like in instances like this where I, this piece is going to be kind of chopped up, I'll throw a, um, I'll throw a cutoff line in here. So just throw a line in and oops, I missed that. So it's, ex it's AutoCAD so I can just extend it. And then I'll say, hey, I want to add a route tool to this that's three quarters of an inch. I want to pick an ent entity that's already here. And I want to make it go to the right because I picked the wrong side. And now that cutoff is going to happen. And I'm going to have a nice clean scrap that's left over. So there's the nest side of things. Sorry, I'm going into a lot of detail here, guys. But hopefully this is good for you. Um, and now I want to show you the reporting. So we've done the nests, we've done everything, we're ready to go. Now I kind of need to present my guys on the floor with something. They're going to have the DWG file. You know, they're not the DW. They're going to have the DWGs uh, PDF or whatever you give them. Um, but now I want to print reports, and I also want to print labels for the um, parts. So we have the ability to print labels on a auto label. So the machine's actually labeling it. We have ability to print labels in the office that you'd bring out in, in sheets. Or we could print on demand at the machine just by a mach, you know, machine that's coming out, you print on demand. I, tip, I came from the background, I printed it all in the office, I brought a clipboard out, and then the, the machine operator had everything right there that he needed. The auto labeling now that's available is pretty awesome. Um, but I'm gonna go into two things. We're gonna do part labels. And we're going to look at what they are giving us. So we can show patterns. So you would go to show patterns if you had a on-demand printer and then you just select the one that you want to label. And then we would go to uh, the machine and do that. So in the label, these, these are this is for on-demand printing because so you can see each label is individualized. Again, Right out of the box, I have not done anything. I have not customized anything. Everything that you see here can be customized. Not by, not by, um, we can customize it. Microvolume can customize it, but um, this can be customized by the user that we have a report designer built into the system so you can edit this. I've edited mine. When I was doing it, I color coded them and I, I did a whole bunch of stuff. So this tells us what, what the net nest number is. So see the nest index number? Actually, no, that's the index number. So the numbers that I was telling you, that's um, that's where that's pulling from. And this tells you my edge banding. So you can see edge banding is the X. You can also make edge banding a thick line. And this gives you part sizes, finish sizes, edge banding instructions, what the PVC is, what the, what the actual um, part product was that's doing it. So that's the part labels. We can also do labels for the um, product itself. So everything said and done, you're ready to see the product. This gives us that product label. We can have barcoding. So barcoding is involved. You can have barcoding for your parts. So if you have horizontal boring, um, you have sheets you wanna load. So these are those. 
So, oops, and then now I want to do reports. So those are my labels, now I'm doing reports. These are out of the box reports. I have not added anything. We can do custom reports. I had a customer that was hand drawing something every project. I used microvellum. He was doing a hand drawing isometric of each cabinet and putting a length, width, and height. Just something simple. Um, and I stopped and I visited him. I was talking to him and I said, hey, you know, we could probably do a custom report for that. And he's like, oh, really? It was taking a couple hours each project doing it. Um, which is great. I mean, he was doing a great favor for his guys on the floor. I mean, because it definitely helps to be able to see exactly, you know, what's happening, what they look like. But it was taking a lot of time for him to do, but it was something he's always done. Um, and he wanted to continue to do it. So what I said was, hey, let me just, let me go back. Let me talk to our team. Let me see if we can develop a custom report for you so that instead of you taking two hours out of your day, to get this drawn up for your guys on the floor, maybe we can just have Microvelm run that report for you. So we did, and it cost him, um, you know, our services cost, I think it was 10, I think it was 10 hours it took us, I think it was around 1200 bucks um, or something like that. Anyways, it was 1200 bucks all in all. And he, and we created that custom report. It was given him the same same exact layout that he had, same exact isometric view because it was pulling in the drawing information, same length, width, and height, same information that all the, all the stuff that he had. Um, so now he was able to take and run this report, and you're walking away in two minutes with a report. So, anyways, we have a lot of ability with reports. The data is already there. It's just a matter of organizing it, getting it put in place. But these are the standard ones that come. So we have door and drawer. We have buyout report. This is where you would get your doors and drawer fronts that you're buying out. We have face frame report. If you were to use face frames, this is going to actually give you a lot of details on that. Master cut report is for the entire project. What I used to use a lot was the product detail report. We have a few different ones here. We have a dynamic, excuse me, a dynamic image one. We have a static image one, which is just going to pull in the ones from the library. So this is coming in zoomed because first time use. So in this one, um, we have, you know, the name of the cabinet. We got um, hardware information. We got each item that's going on here, sub assemblies that's going on, and then each part broken out with that. Um, edge banding information and then we go down right through each one so this is just basically cut list for everything we can show you this static JPEG one too to just give you an idea of what that looks like versus the dynamic this one gives you a little picture it's the same picture that the library has the dynamic image one I think that's something that that typically gives you a 3d wireframe view of it um, something that I'll note and, and let them know, hey, that 3D wireframe. Actually, you know what it was? Is there's a, I can select an option when I'm running the reports for it to make that image and I didn't select it. That's what's going on there. Um, so if we were doing saw optimization, we got those. I'll show you the nest optimization. There's a lot of different nest optimizations. So these are reports that you would print for your CNC operator to, to utilize when they're cutting stuff. So we got barcodes of what the file is. We got the nest information. We got parts one through five, just as what we would see if, um, if we were, if we had laid it out that way in the initial. So this gives us some information on each one. There's one that you can run that's, you know, a little bit more detailed. You can do a summary. Ooh, I think I forgot to hit the summary. Hold on, go back. Go back. So the summary is, is more of a, an idea of what sheets you need. So you'd hand this to your forklift guy. Uh, I used to do this manually these before these reports were here. Um, now that I know what I know, I probably could have had microphone make it for me, but I didn't. Um, so I used to hand this, I used to hand something like this to my 
forklift operator or I'd take it out to the warehouse and I'd get my my stack all ready to go, bring it in, drop it down, and then I'd cut, cut away that project. Um, now with the new material handling systems and everything else they have, you can get away with a whole lot of stuff now. Um, so these are, like I said, this is just a snip snapshot. Oh, the last, they're, sorry, these are kind of important things. But um, so other things that you can do that are cool and you could utilize them um, are there's a quote report. So say you wanted to just give a quick quote to a customer. I could have drawn that kitchen in five minutes. Uh, it just took me 35 minutes or an hour to talk it through. So this quote, this is what you could give a customer. So you got a layout of all your length, width, and heights, your information here. We want to do some up markups here. Maybe our overhead is not 10, it's 20%. We could submit it. It's going to redefine this report and it's going to make that price go up. So we can add notes here. We could save this as a PDF. We could save it as a, um, a document. We could save it as a whole bunch of different things. I'd save it as a PDF and just edit the text if I needed to. So that's a quote that you could give a customer. Uh, material costing report. This is a new one as well. This is going to give us cost breakdown of each material or size like length width heights and then it gives us some costs based on um, either linear footage or square footage then we have a labor report now this is a cool this is a cool thing because microvellum has the ability to, to calculate how much machining it's going to take how much edge banding it's going to need how much labor is associated to each part um, that, that was what I was talking about in the material file. If we set it up for sanding versus finishing, that's all pulling into this and it's given us a time of, hey, how much office labor are you gonna have? How much machining are you gonna have in minutes? How much edge banding are you gonna have? Goes right down through the list and in the end it gives you total minutes of how this project's gonna be. Now you go, oh, well, you know, what? where do those minutes come from? They actually come from this activity token or activity station, we set it up here, we put in a time. How many minutes does it take to do a lead in, lead out? Um, how many minutes does it take to do vertical drilling? Just set up your times and you're good to go. I always say, start with a project that you know what the cost is, you know what this time is, and kind of reverse engineer it for the time. We have a labor value in here of $250 an hour. Maybe your labor value is $150 an hour. You update these like 16 tokens and it's gonna update most of that list. Um, there might be a couple of tweaks here or there for material costs, because um, your material costs are coming from your material library. But um, but it's extremely powerful. You have the ability to do quite a lot. Now, the other thing that you can do, because MicroElement is an SQL database, it's pulling in all this information that's here that we see now, this is all coming from a database. So maybe you have a data, maybe you have a, an ERP system like Crow's Nest or like um, all the other ones. There's a bunch of other ones that are not coming to my head right now. So you have a, a um, system like that. They're going to integrate with MicroVellum's data. So MicroVellum is going to create the data, going to create the information, it's going to push it out to that software. And that ERP system is going to track it throughout the process. We work with many different ones. Um, that's just a conversation that you need to have with us and with them, and we would set that all up. So, on the label, or sorry, on the reporting side of things, we have all those to work from. You can also do report groups. So, say, and this again, this is extremely powerful. This would save me hours and hours and hours of work. So, say I always do. A nest optimization report and a product detail report and a um, and a takeoff report. I can have it automatically run those when I run, and and I can just say, hey, I want to do a report group, and I want all of these reports to be run and created into PDFs when I hit this button. And so I hit this button, and it runs all the reports that I typically run, creates a PDF. I just just grab that and go. So you have automation opt 
automation, uh, something like that, up the wazoo when it comes to this. Um, this this um, processing center is extremely powerful. So um, that's pretty much a rundown of everything uh, and how everything works. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, again, this is Microvellum 2020, the latest, the greatest. Um, it really is a heck of a lot faster than 15, 15 six, like way faster. Um, impressively faster for me and I've been using this software for years. So um, it's gonna really help get the job done and get it done fast. Again, please let me know if you have any questions. Adam.d at microvellum.com. That's Adam, A-D-A-M dot D as in David at microvellum.com or actually D as in Deereg. You can see my name at the top. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and uh yeah thanks for thanks for taking the time to watch sorry hopefully i wasn't too long all right have a great night